Today, we'll dive deep into some of the most intriguing questions in power systems. For example, we know there's always a perfect balance between the energy produced by power plants and the energy consumed. But here's a fascinating question. How does my bulb light up instantly when I flip the switch? Did power plants predict my move and produce this energy in advance? And if so, where on earth was it stored? Let's imagine a steam generator inside a power plant feeding a turbine through a main steam valve. This valve regulates steam flow, thus controlling the mechanical power generated by the turbine. The turbine then spins the rotor of an electrical generator. This rotor is magnetically linked to a stator. From here, the stator's terminals connect to a series of transformers and transmission lines, which we can simplify as pure inductances, because high voltage lines are heavily inductive. On the other end is your modest little house, with a not so modest 10 megawatt bulb capable of lighting an entire village. So you flip the switch and boom, the bulb lights up immediately. You've instantly drawn 10 megawatt from the grid. At this precise moment, let's say the mechanical power fed to the rotor by the turbine is exactly 10 megawatt. With the rotor spinning at a constant frequency, F. According to the swing equation we explored in the previous video, frequency variation is zero because there is a perfect balance. Mechanical input equals electrical output, meaning no change in the rotor's kinetic energy. Now things get interesting. Your neighbor, inspired by your bright idea, flips his switch as well, powering up another gigantic 10 megawatt bulb. Suddenly, the total electrical power from the stator doubles to 20 megawatts. Checking our swing equation again, we now have a negative frequency change rate since electrical power exceeds mechanical power, causing our rotor frequency to drop. Makes perfect sense, right? The rotor's kinetic energy is literally being drained to supply your neighbor's bulb. The rate of this frequency drop depends on two factors the additional power demand, and your system inertia. The higher the inertia, the slower the frequency drops, by an as valuable time to respond and restore balance. Think of inertia like your system's built-in battery, temporary, providing energy until you get things back on track. Now, let's ponder the mystery behind this instant electrical power coming out of the stator. To unravel this, we'll model our synchronous machine as a voltage source behind an inductance X, representing the total inductance from the generator to your home. When you flip the switch, you connect a resistance to the grid, drawing current I. Using Ohm's law, electrical power equals voltage squared divided by resistance. Simple enough, right? But when your neighbor switches his light on, is essentially connecting another identical resistance in parallel with yours. Now, the electrons have two equally resistive paths, halving the total resistance and consequently doubling the electrical power. So, the extra power your neighbor gets is just a result of good old Ohm's law at work. Electrons always choosing the easiest paths, just like most of us, I guess. Everything we've discussed so far has been with a single machine. However, reality is really that simple. The real power grid involves numerous machines and calculating power flow with just Ohm's law and impedances quickly becomes overwhelming. Instead, let's find another approach to express active power transfer over inductive grids, which connects neatly to some local parameters. You're about to witness the derivation of what I think the key equation of power system engineering. Imagine a synchronous machine represented by a voltage source behind an inductance, connected to a grid. We'll use phasor notation here, so if you're rusty on phasors, I've got you covered in one of my previous videos that I highly recommend you to check. Our synchronous machine has voltage magnitude E with angle delta, and it's connected to a grid with voltage magnitude V and angle delta G, 
through an inductance representing the stator and step-up transformer. Let's now calculate active power without explicitly using impedances. We start with complex apparent power, expressed as P plus JQ, P is active power, Q is reactive power, which is also voltage multiplied by the conjugate of current. Using Ohm's law, current in the inductance is E minus V over JX. Distributing the conjugate and using Euler's formula, we isolate real and imaginary parts, eventually arriving at a beautifully simple formula for active power. Voltage magnitudes multiplied, divided by inductance, times the sign of the difference between voltage angles. We call this difference in angles the power angle, because it literally determines active power flow. Feel free to pause here and double check or replicate these calculations. Now, let's extract meaning from this elegant formula. First off, since the sine function peaks at 1, there's clearly a maximum power transfer limit, determined by voltage levels and inductance. With inductance in the denominator, it's evident that the further the load is, the less power we can transfer. Also, Higher voltage magnitudes mean more transferable power. Hence why ultra-high voltage dominates long-distance power transmission lines. But here's the really core cool part here. Given fixed voltage and inductions, we can manage power dispatch between machines by adjusting their internal angle delta, which we control by managing the rotor speed. And just like that, we're back to frequency the start of our series. Let me clarify the link between the swing equation and our power transfer equation. The electrical power in the swing equation can directly be replaced by our newly derived power transfer formula. Frequency, representing rotor speed, directly relates to the angular velocity of the rotor. Plotting power versus power angle gives us a familiar sinusoidal shape. Peaking at 90 degrees, our maximum transferable power, called the pullout power. Suppose we produce a mechanical power PM at the turbine. At equilibrium, frequency variations are zero. Mechanical and electrical power match perfectly at a certain power angle delta E. If we suddenly boost mechanical power at the turbine, the rotor accelerates. Frequency rises and the angle delta increases. But because the angle increases, electrical power output grows until it meets the new mechanical power level, restoring equilibrium at a new angle. And again, having electrical power equals the mechanical power. This continuous balancing act between electrical and mechanical power defines a stable power system. Next time, we'll explore power sharing and uncover the brilliance behind droop control, an unsung hero ensuring your light stays on while you comfortably binge watch these videos. Thanks a lot for watching and catch you in the next one.